Armory Frisbetarians, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can throw just as far or farther than you ever have before with a lot more consistency and you can hit lines better. We're gonna be talking about nose angle. Let's get into it. The nose angle of your disc upon release has a huge impact on how the disc flies. I'm gonna show you why that impacts the disc and then I'm gonna show you what you can do with your wrist, with your elbow, with your weight transfer, and then one super important tip at the end to show you how to piece all of this together. Stick around over the next couple minutes and you'll be throwing nose down lasers in no time. If you can keep the nose of the disc down, the disc will push through the air longer because it's flying more aerodynamically. If you release the disc nose up, then as the disc flies through the air, more wind is going to hit the bottom side of the disc. It's going to push it up. It's gonna make it fade out. So if you want to throw farther and if you want to get a little more turn out of your discs, you need to keep the nose down. The nose angle of the disc has a bigger impact on drivers than it does slower speed discs like putters and mid-ranges. If you're stuck throwing mid-ranges just about as far as you're throwing fairway drivers and distance drivers, you probably have a nose up issue. Keeping the disc down in the air is also crucially important when you get to holes like this one that we have here. I need to be able to push forward 250-ish feet underneath a ceiling. If I throw nose up, the disc is going to drift upwards and hit that ceiling and cut off all the extra distance that I could have on this throw. So let's see if I can get the nose down and get something pushing out through the gap. Nice and smooth, nose down, not worried about that ceiling, and then it pushes straight. I'm gonna have an easy look for an approach shot on this hole. So nose angle is really important, but how do you get the nose of the disc down? Let's look at it. One of the ways is to get your wrist pointed down. When you release a disc, you want the nose of the disc to be down, not up. And you can see where I'm going with this, your wrist controls so much of the nose angle of the disc. You'll often hear people talk about pouring the tea or pouring a cup of coffee or something like that. You want to hold the disc and then point your wrist down as though you were pouring a cup of coffee or tea or whatnot to get that nose down. And you want to hold this angle of your wrist all the way through your pull through. Don't think that you can have a lazy wrist coming up through your pull through and then snap it down at the end. It's just not going to work. As you're pulling through, you want the disc to be below your wrist throughout the entirety of the flight path. So your wrist angle is really important. Your elbow on your pull through also has a ton of impact on your nose angle on release. If you're pulling through and your elbow drops down, one, it's going to be hard to keep your wrist tilted down to keep that disc below the wrist. But also as you pull down with your elbow or if your elbow is dropping through as you throw, you can see the disc wants to go on this line right here. But your body doesn't want to throw this line. Your body knows that you want to throw out straight in front of you. So to correct, you have to swivel upwards and that will naturally cause you to release nose up. A way to fix this sort of elbow drop is by starting your reach back low and then pulling up higher. It's a lot harder for you to drop your elbow if you're starting your reach back low. I mean, this is kind of a funky pull through. You could do it, it's just harder. So a way to trick your body into throwing nose down is to start your reach back lower and pull up. That way your elbow is high and your wrist is high. That way your nose angle can be down. Throwing nose down will get less wind underneath the disc. And so instead of it stalling and fading, it's gonna turn more. If you have trouble throwing long turnover shots, try working on some of these nose down angles and go give them another try. Because discs want to fly nose down, when you release them correctly, you're going to notice you're gonna get effortless distance. It feels cool, looks good, and it'll help you score better too. Because throwing nose down is going to make you throw farther without having to throw as hard, you're gonna have more control over your shots. That's gonna to lead to you hitting more lines as well. It all goes hand in hand. Your wrist angle is important. Your elbow is important. Pull through from low to high. But if you do all of that and then you follow through like this, it's gonna be hard to get the nose angle down. So if you have one of these leaning back follow throughs, try focusing on getting your weight from the center of your body out over your front foot. That way you can incorporate all these things and keep that nose angle down through the release. Now you've just been told several things on what you can work on. And if you're like me, you're probably working on a couple other things in your form as well. So my final piece of advice to you is to take all this information 
and slow down. If you try to do too much at once, you're not going to do any of it correctly, and then you're gonna get frustrated, and then you're gonna give up, and then you're gonna go back to your old form until a couple weeks or months pass by, and then you end up back in the same place saying, man, I need to fix my nose angle. How can I do that? And looking up another video like this. So just slow down, work on one of these things at a time. Once you get that down, try to work on the next piece of the puzzle. You're going to be amazed at how far you throw the disc with very little relative effort. If you go from releasing like this to releasing like this, they want to fly, just let them out of the cage. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment down below, let me know which one of these was most helpful for you or what you want to see next, and subscribe so you don't miss any further content, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.